welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Jennifer Wakeman. Well, if you're like me, you probably think of a quilt as something to curl up under on a cold winter night. Well, come with me to the Packwood House, where they have quilts up that are not only a study in color, but a study in Pennsylvania history. The Packwood House Museum in Lewisburg has long been known for its amazing collection of paintings, pottery, and furnishings. A bequest of nearly 200 quilts made by Robert Glover Shoemaker, noted collector and antiques dealer, has now positioned the Packwood House Museum as a site for quilt study. Uh, a few years ago, the then director of the museum applied and received a state grant. It's a tripartite grant which involved documentation of the quilts, exhibition of the quilts, and a publication. We are now at stage two with the exhibition of the quilts. And only recently, with the formation of the committee to put on the exhibit, did we really find out how extraordinary and unique our collection is. I spent some time in the gallery with committee co-chairs Sherry Walter and Ruth Burnham to talk about the display entitled Pennsylvania Quilts, Studies in Color. The 34 quilts in the gallery were chosen to show the two major influences in 19th century Pennsylvania quilt making, English and Pennsylvania German. This is, Pencil this is an example of a very classic Pennsylvania German influence quilt. The one next to it is, shows the dominance of English influence. Um, two main traditions in 19th century Pennsylvania quilt making, especially in the second half of the century. Um, the contrasts are many. Bright color, very large motif, folk motifs, um, patterns that almost touch and thereby create secondary patterns. Whereas in the English style, each block is a, is a repetition of the other one and there's no interaction between them. Other characteristics such as the zigzag um, inner border con contrasted with a sawtooth or just simple um, triangu triangular combination. Uh, the large uh, striped backs of very, very colorful, surprising, almost shocking colors. The mm -hmm. intertwined cable borders, very, very common. Um, and in Pennsylvania, they don't try to make that pattern go around the corner. They get to the end, stop it, and start again. Um, and that's another characteristic. Hmm. We did not have to borrow a quilt in this, in this collection. There are examples of the same basic pattern mm -hmm. illustrating the differences mm -hmm. um, between. So here's a double Irish chain, one in indigo and white, one in Pennsylvania German colors. Here, this, uh, the pink and green, if you find a pink and green quilt, you can be pretty sure it had something to do with Pennsylvania. But look again at the, the uh, triangle is now a, saw, a um, zigzag rather than the sawtooth look, mm -hmm. which is also very popular. Mm -hmm. Since most of the quilts came with very little provenance, a great deal of research is necessary to determine the age of a quilt as well as its origin. One quilt currently on display generates more questions than answers and is still a mystery that Ruth Burnham is trying to unravel. We started getting ready for this exhibit and I was cu became curious about all the names in each of these little oh, white blocks. I didn't even notice that. There's a name written. Mm -hmm. So I got the quilt out and transcribed all the names and there's 312 names on this quilt. And hmm. um, I've gotten on Ancestry.com and checked old census records and it's become very clear that almost all of these names are from Union County. The quilt, made around 1900, contains names of men, women and children and of families that still reside in the county today. After an article ran in the Daily Item about the quilt, Ruth has been inundated with information about particular people whose names appear on the quilt, but its origins still remain unclear. Is there any sense who made it, why? Was no. it a church group? Was it a fellowship group? I mean, it. This, those are such logical possibilities. Um, the people, the names on the quilt represent different church groups. In other words, mm -hmm. so there's Methodists and Lutherans and whatnot on the quilt. So even though different groups might have participated in a, an individual church's event or making of a quilt, seems a little less likely. Right. Um, 1895 was the centennial of Lewisburg's founding. Mm -hmm. So it might have been a centennial project. Hmm. Um, 1900, the turn of the century. 
there might have been something going on mm -hmm. about that. Um, we just, we haven't had the time yet to, to do all the research we want to do. We I asked Sherry what else we can learn from this collection. Most of the quilts are made for families, made for sleeping, for warmth, that kind of thing. The thing I like to point out, however, is if the only thing a woman is trying to accomplish is to keep her family warm, you would have none of these quilts because of the sheer amount of work that goes into the design and piecing and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a great deal we can learn sort of coming in by the back door about American history, about women's lives, women, what expectations there were, um, what, what, what in their, the, the way they spent their time was valued. Those exquisite quilts you see that are just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quilting, that's a different sense of time than we have today. They just didn't worry about was it going to be done by the end of the weekend. And so there's a great deal we can learn about a woman's history and place in the family and place in the community. And there are people who like to study the quilts just as quilts and there are people who like to study them as examples of women's history. And In order to draw attention to the quilt collection, a committee from the Packwood House Museum has scheduled a quilt weekend for August 21st through 23rd. Workshops will be held throughout the weekend on a variety of topics from the use of color in quilts to reproduction fabrics to Japanese stitching techniques. One of our main drawing cards is actually a local celebrity, Jeanette Lisansky who was one of the earliest quilt documenters in connection with the uh, revival of American historical uh, confidence for the bicentennial. She worked uh, during the 1970s and 80s and documented hundreds and hundreds of quilts in central and southeastern Pennsylvania. Lazansky will be speaking at a dinner lecture Friday night, August 21st at Country Covered. Saturday night will feature another noted speaker. Donna Rupert of um, Monrovia, Maryland, whose both business and passion is the reproduction of antique quilts, and she is extremely knowledgeable in antique fabrics and uh, antique reproduction fabrics, uh, and helped us much in, in explicating our quilt collection, and she will be here to talk about the progression of 19th century quilt making, taking into account the Industrial Revolution and the um, implication this had for the variety of fabrics that we see in the quilts of the second half of the 19th century. The dinner lectures are open to the public and you can find registration information as well as a description of the workshops online at www.packwoodhousemuseum.com. With a quilt collection as broad and intriguing as this one, the Packwood House Museum offers people a phenomenal opportunity for quilt study of all kinds. There are people who will come and just enjoy them for the beauty. Mm -hmm. There are people who come and enjoy them for the memories. My grandma made a quilt just like that. And there will be people who will come to study them as objects of society or community. The gallery exhibition runs through October 24th and can be seen Tuesday through Saturday from 10 until 5 p.m. I had no experience or knowledge with quilting and they've seduced me completely. I love these quilts and I've, I've mm -hmm. so enjoyed working on them. Mm -hmm. And in a way we really need those out of town people, out of state, out of wherever because there is so much knowledge potential here mm -hmm. that we're hungry to learn from the people who are way far ahead of us in research. So it's not only for museum ambition or something like that, it's because there are valuable resources. You'll want to be sure and visit the Packwood House Museum to enjoy the gallery exhibition as well as the 50 quilts arrayed throughout the House Museum. They are right here in your neighborhood. Coming up after the break, it's a true multimedia event when we bring radio to television. Stay tuned. <laughs>